Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. <laughs> Welcome to update number 11 on the 1000 scale Enterprise D Galaxy class project. In the last update, we got the phaser array sorted. That was a whole pile of work, but it looks absolutely fantastic. Well, in this update, we're going to get the upper saucer phaser array installed. We are going to get the saucer prepared to attach the neck. We're going to get it attached to the neck, and hopefully we're also going to be able to get that neck attached to the secondary hull and start getting the electronics sorted into those areas. So there's a lot of work to get done. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know how far through that process we're going to get in this update, but we sure are going to make a good go at it. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. So the first thing I'm doing is in permanently installing the phaser array into the model. And that involves a permanently attaching the LED strip down to the model and then creating the light box that's going to maintain the light blocking for the phaser array. So I've got a strip of styrene that's going around to enclose the side and then pieces that are cut to size that will go over top and seal it in. And of course this will get appropriate light blocking paint on the inside to contain that because you can see that it is actually glowing out the side of the styrene. This was tacked in place temporarily with hot melt glue. I will never use hot melt glue in a model for anything other than temporary placement, just because it will set something in place very quickly. And then it's been epoxied on the inside so that it will never move. And then this is going to be epoxied on top. And again, as I said, it'll get the appropriate light blocking. The top of the phaser array is now placed on and there is going to be a lot of light blocking that will need to be done but this is the light box for the phaser array done and the saucer is now ready to be installed onto the neck. However, before I do that I need to finish cleaning out the shuttle bay areas here so that I can install the shuttle bay doors. Once those are installed then the neck is ready to be installed onto the bottom saucer. Now I may have spoken too soon when I said that the bottom saucer section was ready to be installed to the neck as I do need to install the navigation lights before I do that. So I've gone to the reference photos of the studio model and discovered exactly where they need to go. I've marked them out, at least the side ones and the front ones out on the top saucer section. Those will get translated over to the exact same positions on the bottom saucer. There's also the ones in the back here that line up with the lights on the neck. And there's also a strobe on top of the back of the bridge, which will need to be installed. So those need to go in before I install the saucer bottom to the neck. That'll just make life a lot easier that way. All the 0402 SMDs for the navigation lights have been installed and I've even been able to install the upper saucer phaser rate since those LEDs just arrived. So with that done, I think I am pretty much ready to install the lower section onto the neck. Now I'm not going to film any of that on camera as it's going to be very delicate alignment work that's going to be going into that and I do not want the distraction of filming that but I will definitely show you the results once that's all done. So I'm hand holding this shot because the saucer and neck are hanging off of my camera's tripod and you can see that the neck is now fully installed onto the saucer and I'm hanging it here so that you can see that it is in fact structurally sound on there. That is really well epoxied in place. There's obviously refinement that's going to have to happen and it's not epoxied all the way to the edge. I might just putty that just to get that nice clean edge there but it is structurally sound and ready pretty much to be installed onto the secondary hall which is going to be the next major construction step. Here we go, we have one successfully joined secondary and primary hull. Now, you may be able to see that there's a bit of a gap in between the secondary hull and the neck. And uh, you can actually see the threaded pins through the resin. 
but it is joined very well thank you to those threaded pins to create that good solid joint and I will be filling in those gaps in the neck it's just a matter of uh, the parts how they join together there is a little bit of a lip on the joint on the other side I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with you may not have been able to see it there my next job is going to be sorting out the wiring coming out the neck I may have made my job a little bit more difficult because there are some wires down in there that I need to lengthen which I probably should have lengthened before I join the neck to the secondary hall but I will still be able to do it there it'll just be a little more finicky and uh, tricky to do but we have something that is starting to look like a ship i've got the ship back over on the workbench so i can deal with all the wiring there's some short wiring down inside the neck here that needs to be lengthened i really should have done that before i installed the neck onto the secondary hall not a big deal i can deal with it it's just a bit of extra work so i've moved it over to the workbench where i've got access to my soldering station and my power supply to assist with the progress of that and i also will go back to photographs and video just to make sure that i've got all the wiring uh going where it belongs and i'm not mixing any of that up so it's great to have a visual record of everything that you've done on the project so all the wires that need to be extended have been extended like these ones here i've also extended the data cables for the phaser arrays and for a very good reason i've started working on the armature here's a piece of the armature now this portion let me just get this piece off here this portion has been all secured together and the length on this part here has been verified I've also installed a length down in the neck and this piece is going to go onto this one here it's a bit of a tight fit right now but this will go down into the neck and the yellow and the white phaser data cables will also travel through the post so this will go in here then I have another piece, a T-junction that'll go on the front, and then all this will get secured down to the saucer, giving a nice secure connection to the model, and this will bear the weight of the model on the stand. However, I do need to take my Dremel and clean this portion out here. I just have to kind of create a channel, a bit of a, a groove along here for this rod to sit down in a little more flush so that everything just kind of connects better to the model and sits better also I need it to this to lower down just slightly with that groove in order for the top saucer to sit on nice and cleanly so that's what I'm going to be doing next I'm going to be get, taking my Dremel creating a bit of a trench here just for this post to sit into and then I will get that armature installed and secure it down here we have the armature now installed in the sense that it has been fully secured together now it is not attached to the saucer or the front of the neck yet and that is my next step i'm going to use an incredible amount of epoxy to make sure that this is anchored fully into the kit and you may also notice right in here i have shaved a bunch of the resin on the neck away to give uh, the clearance for this part to go in it sits better down onto the neck and gives the necessary clearance for the top saucer to go on if you've been watching the build series since the beginning which has taken about a year so far a lot longer than expected due to all the delays surrounding covid with shortages and unexpected issues then you will remember that this isn't exactly the first plan for the armature on the saucer section this was the original plan a round oval shaped support that would have been epoxy directly down to the saucer here however due to the fact that we have made this model so much better with the help of danny and uh, we have added the lower saucer phaser array which was exactly where i was planning for this support to go because it wouldn't have blocked any windows so this is the second iteration of the support and i think it's not too much 
It's definitely going to be more than enough to support the weight of the model and the saucer, and it's just a really nice, elegant solution. So, this was the original. It was a great idea. It came out, I mean, it doesn't look overly pretty, but it would have worked very well. But I think that this is going to be just a great, elegant solution. It's low profile, and it also keeps extra weight out of the model, which is important considering that this is being shipped across the ocean when it is done. So, I am going to mix up a bunch of epoxy, lay it in here, and secure this thing in as well as I possibly can. Here we have a good chunk of epoxy on the support, securing it to the saucer and to the neck, which also adds extra support in joining the saucer to the neck, which is all good. This is going to need to sit for a good chunk of time before I do anything that puts any sort of load onto the support of the model. It needs to be fully cured. So that's probably going to be the work that I get done on this project during this update. With the epoxy on the armature, that is going to be it for this update. I hope that you really enjoyed it. It's a little bit of a shorter update, but full of content. You know, I really appreciate when you watch my updates. I never want to waste your time filling it with pads. So it's a little bit shorter today, uh, but so much got done. A, a major part of the build got done. The armature is in. It is sitting over at the other desk, curing right now. Hopefully I'll get a really nice picture of it up on a post for the thumbnail for this video, which if I've been successful, you've already seen it. So that is super exciting. I hope you really enjoyed this. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. And we are so close to 1,000 subscribers for this 1,000 scale Galaxy Class Enterprise D project. And if you want to help me get to that 1,000 subscriber goal with this project, you can help out right now by clicking that subscribe button. You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, my name is Andrew, and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.